And if there's something you'd like us to feature on a future edition of Inside Out West, then why don't you drop me a line? My address is josie at bbc.co.uk. Losing a baby after a nine-month pregnancy must be one of the hardest things for any parent to have to cope with. Our final story tonight is about a woman from Somerset who, after suffering her own personal tragedy, is offering support to other parents. OK, is everybody ready? Yeah. <laughs> OK, five, four, three, two, one, go! On a chilly winter's day in a garden near Swindon, a group of women are celebrating the lives of their children. But they are the children they never got to know, because these women's babies died before or just after they were born. I was pregnant with identical twin girls, and um, I went into early labour, and they were born, and they died the same day. I just said to the midwife, I said, the worst thing about this is I can't walk out of the hospital with my baby and take her home and put her in her cot. And she said, if you want to take her home, you can take her home. So I took her home. You know, the, the most heartbreaking thing I've ever done is had to go home and tell my little boy that his baby brother had died. I was 23 weeks and two days with him. Um, still don't know any results to why we lost him. Um, The mums have been brought here to take part in a day of therapy and support. It's been organised by Mel Scott from Bridgewater in Somerset, who lost her own baby Finlay in the summer. She's called it the Angel in Your Life Memory Day. I said, like I said earlier, the, the tears are quite close to the surface for all of us, really, so um, I'm not going to intrude. If, if you're upset and you're crying, that's absolutely fine for you to do that. I might pass you a tissue or somebody might give you a cuddle, but we're not going to not going to take the tears away because there's quite an important healing in, in the release of them. It's just five months since Mel and Baz Scott lost their first child, Finley. Mel had had a healthy pregnancy, but during labour, Finley went into distress and he died during an emergency caesarean. The shock was immense, but Mel was encouraged by midwives to remain in hospital with Finley for three days to take photographs and videos of him. This, she believes, helped her to come to terms with his death. The first day, people kept giving him to me and I was just didn't want to hold him, didn't know what to do. Um, and then as time went on, kind of the next day, I started to want to hold him more and they'd put him into a nice little fluffy blanket which was quite tactile, so it meant that I wanted to hold him and stroke him. And the bathing him was just the most important thing for me because it, it helped me to see that there was nothing wrong with him, there was nothing physically wrong with him at all, he was absolutely perfect. Um, and I needed to do that, I needed to be his mum and I needed to have bathed him and washed him and got him dressed like you would do with any baby because he's, a, he's my baby and he's a part of our family. While Mel has thrown herself into running the support group, her husband Baz has found his own way of coping. We'll go and see Finley at a weekend and tell him the football results. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a bit. Then you couldn't go one weekend, could you? Because they'd lost. <laughs> yeah, quite badly. And you see the shapes the clouds make as they roll by. You realise this is a gift that your baby has given to you. Having spent 10 years working as an occupational therapist, Mel believes she has the skills not only to deal with her own grief, but also to help other bereaved parents. So you're breathing in peace and breathing out love. There are already many support groups where parents can talk about their feelings, but what Mel is offering is something more proactive. I needed to be doing something to make myself feel better. It wasn't enough for me to go and talk about it for an hour because I've got lots of friends. If I want to pick up the phone and talk to someone, I can just do that. Um, so I was looking at all the techniques and all the things that I do to help myself feel better and I thought there's a lot of information in here that I need to be sharing with people. As you breathe in, tense the muscles in your tummy. 
it can just help give you back that sense of control if you're actually in control of how you feel um you can get through the grief much easier it's not not such a roller coaster if you can actually control a little bit how you're feeling the meditation side where you actually think and um go to a place where you can think properly um it just feels calm and peaceful and it does actually feel quite close to your baby Mel encourages the mums to express their emotions by writing letters to their babies. I still find it really hard to talk sometimes about her because it's only eight weeks ago, so it's still really fresh for me. And sometimes it's hard to share with some people. But today has been easier because everyone's been through the same. So I feel I can express what I feel. And as they release their letters with the balloons, they'll be letting a little bit of grief go too. The nice thing about today is that we've done physical things, we've done the balloons, we've done messages and things like that, so that's been really helpful and, and nice to do something a bit different perhaps as well. Would you go to something like this again? I think I would, yeah. I didn't think I would when I booked up, to be honest, um, but it's been really nice and it's been a lot more relaxing and, and um, just sort of down to earth than I thought it was going to be, so, so yeah, I think I would. And for Mel herself, this has been a healing experience. All that I'm doing is helping me because it's helping me remember Finlay. I'm doing everything because of him and because he was here. So in some ways I'm still grieving, I'm just choosing to deal with it differently. People use the term moving on to describe grief and, and I guess they're talking about the acceptance that comes at the end of the grief cycle but to me that's such a negative term because moving on implies moving away from Finley and leaving him behind and I'm not prepared to do that he's going to be the reason why life is different he's going to be the reason why we achieve everything that we achieve and we won't be moving on from him we may choose to talk about him less we may not go, go and see him so much we may put some of these things away, but actually he will still be a part of us and we won't forget him. So my darling Finley, thank you for coming to be with us. You've already made such a big impact on our lives with your short one. I don't think there has ever been another little person who is loved so much. We will think of you when we see a rainbow, the beauty in the balance of the sunshine and rain, or when we see a candlelight flicker the rays of sunshine through the clouds or a butterfly. They say if a butterfly flaps its wings in Australia, a wind blows here. That's just like you. You never got the chance to flap your wings, but you sure made a change in the world. We love you without conditions, without regret. And there's more about the support group for bereaved parents on our Somerset website. The address is bbc.co.uk slash Somerset. Well, that's it for this week, but we'll be back next week with three more surprising stories from the West. John Craven will be revisiting the scene of an unsolved murder in Bristol to see how detectives are using modern day DNA techniques to try to catch a killer. Plus, Alistair McKee investigates the slow progress of Bristol's Cycling City project. And the fascinating story of a superstar's brooch and the voice that crossed continents. That's all next week, but until then, bye for now.